Now this is the part where we do six video editors with six graphics cards, but we don't have six graphics cards. I don't know what accent that is. Now, it's not often around here that we have a project that's so big, we don't even have enough hardware to validate if it's going to work. But that's what six video editors, one CPU has been like. But the good news is that even though some of the final hardware isn't quite here yet, we have enough to know for sure if it's gonna work. So we've got all six monitors and the keyboards and mice that go with them for all of our stations. We've got our pile of high-end graphics cards over here. I don't know if you guys can even see this, but I want one per system over here. We've got, oh, this is really cool. Where is it? Ah, oh, oh yeah, here it is. We've got the replacement for that PCIe 4X interface to our daughter board. So I believe this is either 8X or 16X, which means we shouldn't run into bottlenecks for all of our USB controllers. And oh, we've got Intel Optane, along with the cards to go with that and better coolers for our 28 core CPUs. So today is the acid test. Does it actually work? We're gonna find out. Smart Deploy allows IT departments to reimage unlimited computer models from one golden image. Search their library and grab your exclusive free licenses worth over $600 at smartdeploy.com slash Linus. So first order of business, is to kind of reconstruct what's going on in here because we've had to tear apart a lot of it uh, over the last little while due to other projects like that crazy thing with the four Titan Vs and all, all that nonsense. So let's go ahead and get back to a functioning state and then we will go from there. Now, because a big part of the goal today is eliminating all of the hypotheticals, we're gonna do away with things like our gigantic split screen four-way monitor. And we're gonna actually set up each workstation as it is intended to be used with a single monitor and keyboard and mouse. Although it should be noted that we could easily run dual monitors since we're just passing through entire graphics cards. I gotta get this past you here. Oh, sorry, David. <laughs> We're not quite going back to the previous state though. One thing that we are going to change is this. So now, instead of a half height, like low profile card that passes through PCI Express 4X, we have got this honkin' sucker that we're gonna go ahead and, uh, I'm not sure which one's the host side and which one is the target side, but uh, we're gonna go ahead and install one of them into here. You know what, I think it actually has dip switches so that you can configure it. Mm, they're both configured the same way, maybe it doesn't. Uh, so on, on, oh my God, it, like it doesn't indicate what for six, just at one, two, four. <sighs> we'll figure it out. Okay, so I think I figured it out. Uh, these little switches, we just need them in on, on, off for this guy. And then, uh, hold on, off, on, on for one, two, and four. And, uh, okay. But then six is labeled backplane type? <laughs> what? It looks like we are running PCIe 8X, although if we got our hands on another one of these cables, we could run 16X by using a uh, dual host, I think, or something. Anyway, 8X should be enough to start. This thing is just ridiculous, like this connector, look at it. So even compared to the 4X connector we had last time, which looks BA, that's the 8X connector. This is great. I found the card from last time. So instead of this card, now we need this card. <laughs> so it's basically exactly this doubled up. Sheesh. Now we gotta get the other side installed in our system here. That's the only configurable thing on here. Let's go ahead and install it. 
here, these are all in. I've got my NVMe drives here. <laughs> so the next thing I need, ah, here we go, is the test cart hooked up to the back of the system here. And then while I do that, Yvonne is setting up all the stations with their monitors, keyboards, and mice, though. It will be a little bit until we're actually quite ready for that. Can I get that big fit? Yep, exactly that. And I think we should be ready to fire up the system. I hooked up the power button this time to make my life a little bit easier. So I guess we find out if that works right now. Uh-oh. Oh, what the crap? Put the motherboard back in without actually hooking the motherboard power back up. Woo, okay. It's a little better. So ridiculous. You have to sign up for an account to get a user manual for this card and it wasn't working, so fine. I'm signed up and here we go. Okay, I think I did it entirely wrong, but I'm not sure why. Because their diagram here doesn't actually correspond to the number of dip switches that's on here. On for one and two, off for three and four. That is completely different from what it says here, as far as I can tell. On for one and two, off for three and four. I really hope this works. So I think it's configured right now. What we should see is this fan, fan spin. spin when I power up. And we got nothing. And I don't know why. Okay, there's another dip for black backplane type and that's just labeled directly on here. So let's try selecting a different backplane type, shall we? Nothing, no power to it at all. Maybe we have to do the same thing on the other side. Wait, oh no. I turned this off while I was troubleshooting. Uh, this is what happens when you hurry. Not that that fixed it. Okay, now hold on a minute. I think I get it. Oh boy. Okay, whatever that is probably isn't good. Stop, 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 stop. Okay, so off on, off on. <laughs> so, Whatever mode we're using now, you have to go from the bottom port out into the top port and it, I don't know, it's on. So uh, maybe it's working. There it is. They have flashing lights on their slots, but they're detected. So presumably they're working. Uh, one way we can tell for sure is just plugging this mouse into, into one of them. Wait, no, I think I already have them stubbed. Yeah, I do. Okay, that, that's fine. That's fine. Oh, snap. Oh, crap. Oh, shoot, I just unplugged this. Uh, that's really bad, probably. Oh, shoot. Oh, I hope this still works. I don't smell burning. It's turning back on and everything looks normal. Hopefully that's fine, what just happened there. So the next stage, assuming that we're still past getting this to work stage, is 10 gig networking for the whole thing. Woo! Still works. That's good. Oh, there it is. We're 10 gig, all right. Now I just, just need to copy our install images off, or at least one of them, because it's time for us to put Optane in. That's how everyone does it. That's industry standard. So I actually only had five USB cards in here before. I found another one that gives us the full complement of six and it's happening. I'm swapping out these peasant 750 series drives for Optane. The reason we care about running Optane for our boot drives is that these handle random IO much better than traditional SSDs. And when we're gonna have six operating systems running off them at the same time, that becomes really important. Oh shoot, I totally forgot. I gotta put all the graphics cards in. Let's see, X little P, Titan X. Okay, so Titan X, Titan XP, 1060, 1070, 
and maybe we'll put another quadro in there, I don't know. Now we've yet to actually boot this motherboard with six graphics cards. So we're in uncharted territory right now. This could be the thing that kills the entire project. Um, let's do that one. So jank. Jankness is real. Throw that on there. Okay, this last card is our jankiest. I think it's gonna have to kind of hang out right there. Okay, should be fine. Now we fire it up. And we have a display out, so that's a good sign. That's not a good sign. I know we're asking for a lot here, motherboard, but if you could Come through for me. What the hell? I don't think I have ever heard a hardcore sounding error code like that, followed by the system just booting. Oh. In order to display this message, some PCI devices were set to a disabled state. Oh. Maybe above 4G decoding will solve this problem. Okay. Let's see if above 4G decoding is going to help us. Boom, there it is. I think we're booting now. Did it just turn off? Now, why didn't it pick up my boot device? Well, that's interesting. Our USB key is just not even in here anymore. Okay, so uh, the only thing I changed was disabling the boot option ROM from all of our PCI Express devices, which I can't imagine mattered. And then I moved our USB boot device into a different USB port. I wonder if one of our onboard USB controllers isn't working because now it's showing up. Although maybe it was just a fluke last time. I, I, I don't know. So it's here now. Let's see. All right. So now we're going Optane on our cache and starting the array. There's our Titan XP. There's our Titan. There's our GTX 1060. There's our Quadro GV 100. There's another one. And there's our 1070. All six graphics cards are here. And six USB controllers at least. Beautiful, and there's our 10 gig card. I think we've got everything we need here. I should go do WAN show. So update time. WAN show is now complete and we can start to dig in and make sure everything's working the way we expected. Now, I still only have my four VMs set up from the last test, but this is as simple as making some reconfigurations to the CPU assignments, the GPU assignments and the USB card assignments and bippity boppity, we should be off to the races. So theoretically, we are gonna just fire this bad boy up and, and go. Now, once we know everything's working and it's time to performance optimize, we're gonna wanna do things like make sure that none of the VMs have CPU cores that cross from one CPU socket to another because then we're gonna take a performance hit there and we're also going to want to make sure that every VM has a graphics card that's in a slot that is actually also directly connected to the CPU that those cores are physically present on. That's going to be really important. I think I might have bumped that stupid cable again. The whole system restarted when I bumped that external PCI Express cable. Well, I don't think it's because I bumped the cable. I think it's because I don't really have the cards screwed in. Okay, well, while we wait for that, we can do the uh, totally safe um, plugging in of display cables. So, uh, can I just take a moment to point out how good I am at plugging in monitor cables without looking? That no scope monitor plugging in. What was that? David, can I get an HDMI cable from down there? Sure. Sorry, it's just hard for me to get down. <laughs> it's all good. Oh. Do you ever just like picture 
the engineers at Intel and NVIDIA watching something like this? Oh, okay, let's make sure all of our USB doodads are still in here. One, two, three, and four are up. Number five's not, not doing anything. Did that one fail? Execution error. Could not find device, all right. We're just gonna do yield reboot and reseed all that stuff. Crap. Now let's try firing this up again and it should be fine. So I think what happened was the USB controller for this one uh, disconnected from the system when I bumped the cable and then the one for this one took the fifth slot so neither of them was able to start. Also, what we can do now is we can come around here and see if any of these monitors are lighting up. This one just turned blue. So I think that means it's about to light up. Hey, there we go. there's one. Okay, we got, hey, one. This is not working. Uh, do you wanna let me know when you see a, a pop-up over there? On the... Like I'm gonna plug in a mouse. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's it? Yeah. Now we should be able to figure out which VM is supposed to be on all of the other monitors here. Theoretically, this is WS1, but my display isn't lit up, so... What I'm hoping is that I'll, like, move the mouse and it will wake up. Honestly, I don't even know what's going on right now. Also, the name of this didn't change. What is going on here? Yo. Hey. Wake up. Like this one just went from having a blue light to having no signal and a yellow light as I'm shutting down VMs. So what we can do in the meantime, I guess, is uh, Unraid has a new version or two, actually, since uh, I installed this. So why don't we update that and see if everything magically resolves itself. The plot thickens. Now that we're rebooting the system to apply our update, we have power to this keyboard. My level of pissed off right now is pretty high. <laughs> now I've seen monitors that have a bit of a hard time picking up signals. I have a hard time believing that six monitors here all have the same problem, but does that just say no signal? So my theory about those cards being in order Whenever it works, we're gonna label it as quickly as we can. Mm, yeah. All right. Next up is this guy. That's not what I was expecting. So this is the 1060. Which one is that? Who knows? So the little game we're playing is called Find the Patterns. And so far, the only one that has managed a successful reboot is number five. I believe that's the one that I assigned the sound card to. Wouldn't that be funny? Okay, that's actually booting. There's four, so it lit up, but has not actually managed to start loading Windows yet. Oh, there it goes. Now, one thing John from Unraid suggested was that we ended up screwing up where our V-Discs were. Some of them are on the array and some of them are on the cache. And he had said he's run into some weird IO bottlenecking nonsense with the way that storage devices are virtualized that might be explaining some of the finicky behavior. Um, so we need to make sure all of those are on the Optane drives. Number five came up. So this one's now consistent, which is good to see. This is getting very interesting. So six and two are the ones we haven't seen yet. So everything that we've had working so far is working right now. Is six gonna light up for me? So six should be this one, theoretically. All right. So let's try moving those V-discs and see if that solves it. Yeah, neither of those are coming up. Okay. Okay, we have some material to work with here. I'm gonna shut her down for now. PIA hides your true IP address and allows you to bypass geo-restrictions and censorship by making you appear as though you're connecting from somewhere else. 
and you can use up to five devices at once. It also helps prevent attacks by blocking unwanted connections, it auto-blocks all traffic if the VPN disconnects, and it keeps your data out of the hands of advertisers and other activity tracking snoops. So go try it out at the link in the video description today. It's affordable and it works. You bet. You might as well eat some for a bit. Like, don't, don't die over this project. Yeah, I was starting to get like... Yep. <laughs>